Sharks are really important parts of our ecosystem because they actually serve as sort of police. They really keep our ocean cycle healthy. They're very curious animals. They just kind of check you out. If more people were able to see them up close, they'd be better understood than they are right now. I often get asked, what would a world without sharks look like? And my answer is always, I don't know, and I don't want to know. MISS is Minorities and Shark Sciences. Um, it is a nonprofit organization founded by four black women in shark science, made to support women and gender minorities of color in the field of shark science. MISS started in the summer of 2020. Uh, around that time, that was when a lot of civil unrest was happening in our country. Um, most recently to the start of MISS, the Chris Cooper incident where a lady called the cops on a black man while he was bird watching. So that kind of sparked a movement on Twitter through a hashtag black in nature. And from this hashtag, I was able to find Carly who had posted a tweet about her doing shark research. And that was the first time that I had ever met another black woman that did shark science. And so I was really excited and I replied to her tweet and said, oh, you do shark science, me too. And then the other co-founders popped in of me three, me four. And uh, we jokingly said we should start a club. From the idea of Miss to when we launched it, there was two weeks in between. Um, we ran Miss almost for a whole year without meeting each other. We used Zoom and Slack and texting. It was born from the internet um, and from civil unrest and from us being like, I'm sick of being the only black woman in the room at any of these conferences. It's not only a way for us to help increase diversity in the field in the future, but a great way for us to all come together as women and gender minorities of color currently in the field. We offer several programs. So for our K through 12 outreach, we have a program called Science by the Sea that invites local kids to come out and learn about the marine ecosystem. We also have a summer camp, which we'll be launching for the first time this summer for teens, 13 to 17. And we have our Guild Guardians program, which is content that lives online. And then for our undergraduate to master's students, we have our workshops, which are for people who are actively trying to get into the field of shark research and conservation, but haven't gotten those necessary field skills to be able to do that. Our purpose with these programs is to create a more equitable pathway into shark science and break a lot of barriers that prevent underrepresented groups from entering this field because getting hands-on field research in shark science is usually a pay-to-play type thing. So you have to pay for experience um, or maybe you won't even get experience until you go to grad school. And uh, these research workshops are really beneficial because we provide travel, we pay for their stay, um, we pay for any associated fees so that it's completely free for women of color trying to get into this field. So I knew the people at field school before we actually started MISS. They're a really big reason that I'm in shark science today. And when we decided we wanted to make MISS, they were the first people to say, we will support you in this. And they donated their boat and their time and their money to, for us to be able to do the most basic thing for MISS that we wanted to do, which was our workshop. A lot of the animals we catch around here have to swim to breathe, with the exception of like nurse sharks, and sawfish, and things like that. I think like hammerheads, tigers, bulls, black tips. So the workshops, I think, are always a ton of fun. Um, basically what we do is we have people come out on a Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday, we go out and catch sharks, and we tag them and release them again. So Friday is usually just kind of like a get to know you time. We'll do a little, uh, like a shark 101. Sometimes we'll go over what kind of sharks will you see here um, in Biscayne Bay, kind of creating that community on the boat. And then on Saturday, we go out and we drum line, which is how you get the bigger sharks, which is always very exciting. So we've got a weight and a baited hook at the bottom and then a float at the top. Basically, we let it sit for a little while and then we pull it back up. And if there's a shark on the line, we start a work up. The first thing that we do is we take measurements. So we'll take what we call the pre-caudal length, 
uh, which is right to the bend of that tail. Uh, then we take the fork length, which is where the tail kind of splits. And then we take total, which is the total length of the animal from nose to tail. And then we'll take girth, so it's how wide the animal is. If we get a hammerhead, we'll also take a measurement of how wide that cephalofoil or the hammer part of the hammerhead is. Then we will also take fin clips, similar to how you can take a fingernail clipping uh, and get genetic information from that. Uh, and then we do what's called a biopsy, which is where we take a little bit of muscle tissue. And then uh, the last thing that we do is take a sample of blood. And all of this information can tell us a ton of different things about the animal, like what it's been eating, where it's been, and kind of things like that. When we pull up a shark, everyone has their individual jobs and we get the shark back in the water as quickly as possible. It's always amazing to see their first time, you know, like working on a shark like this. When they see a shark for the first time, that's not in an aquarium, that's not on a movie, but they physically see it and get to touch it. That level of excitement is just so contagious and I get equally as excited just by seeing their faces um, and how thrilled they are that they're actually like next to a shark, especially when they never thought they would be able to see one. I really liked when we got the giant bull shark on board and I got to help measure it out. I thought that was really cool. We have women from all different types of life stages coming to learn shark research because it's a passion that they've had for a long time but never had the opportunity to pursue it. We've had a few of these workshop participants go on to do uh, Miss Fellowships, uh, do more field research, and it's been super rewarding to get responses from people who are members and them saying, you've made me want to be in shark science. You've created a space for me where I feel really safe in shark science. You've helped me get this opportunity. And now I have this job that I never thought I would have. A lot of people have stereotypes about who people are based on their identities. So thinking that a woman can't do shark science because she's not strong enough or fit enough to be able to handle sharks, or thinking that people of color aren't interested in marine science uh, because of ideas surrounding, oh, well, they don't swim and they don't go in water. Uh, you kind of feel like you have to prove yourself, which can be really frustrating. It's so important to teach the next generation and to give them opportunities in marine science because a lot of underrepresented communities aren't even presented with the idea of becoming a marine scientist or a shark scientist. It really makes a big difference when you have people who are in your corner that you know are willing to go to bat for you, support you 100% of the time. Um, it brings out, I think, the, the best in you and other people and it brings out your inner scientist really well. Miss brought me this much larger community of all of these people around the world who are also interested in shark science. And it's, it's given me the opportunity to be the representation that I wish I had when I was a kid. 